My next guest on the Tea Time Sofa is Olivier Award-winning playwright and screenwriter Morgan Lloyd Matthew. She's well known for Amelia, her play that was commissioned by The Globe and has now been optioned as a film. Her latest play, The Long Tricks Over, has been created in collaboration with the new Wolseley Theatre and is scheduled to tour the east of England in spring 2022. The play looks at the various stages of grief against the backdrop of a 53-mile swim from Dover to Calais. Produced by High Tide Theatre, the production promises to be thought-provoking and a testament to the fortitude of the human spirit. The play is at the New Walsley from the 11th to the 15th of February and thereafter is touring across 10 venues. Let's find out more. Welcome to Tea Time with me, Ali Monjack Morgan. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. I've just had my booster, so I'm feeling very good. <laughs> You're feeling boosted? I'm feeling boosted. <laughs> Brilliant. No, that, that's really good. As we were saying before um, we came on, that we were, yeah, really sort of up for vaccines. And you know, it's a good well, definitely thing. for this one. I think, I think, yeah, I think the the COVID. I think it feels like it's you know the right thing to do at the moment, but we won't get into that. <laughs> no, well, let's let's <laughs> quite a, an interesting situation. And you know, I mean, what you're doing now as a writer. So mm. the the long trick saver is your mm. sort of. Um, is it, would you is it fair to say debuting really yeah it's a premiere um it's never been performed before uh high tide are producing it with um the new Aussie at uh, ipswich and it will be touring around the east of england and um it's a play that i've been i've i've, I've been working on for a little while it's quite a i don't know it's it's one of those plays it's quite a personal one um but it also needed people who really sort of got it and understood what I was trying to do with it because it's quite um it kind of goes there so yeah I'm excited to see it finally realized because it's been in my head and on the page for so long now oh wow so when did you actually start writing it oh god that's such a good question I actually need to trace back when it was I think it's a good eight or nine years to be honest I mean it takes it's taken me a while to get to the point where people want my plays <laughs> you know it's um yeah. I've, you know I, I've done lots of lots of stuff over the years um but it wasn't until I did a play called Amelia that was on at the Globe and then the West End and now now I've got I, I've had a couple of plays recently that were on at in Sheffield and at Plymouth and Soho and they were both plays as well that suddenly got got, got going after Amelia which is lovely and the same for when the long trick's over so I'm, I'm just really excited to finally see them realized oh that's amazing i mean the long trick saver is almost really quite apt for you know the, the times that we're in because it, mm. it's really dealing with grief isn't it yeah it's um it's a play that's dealing with a woman who is coming to terms with grief um and trying to work out work through the things that's in her history in her life and her family um has stayed with her stayed in her body and she's doing a really physical thing so the the character in the play is swimming swimming the channel um for the whole play so you're you're with her the whole way through she's doing a channel swim and she's doing it in memory of her mum and her sister mostly her sister and but she's also it's like the process the process of doing it is 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 her trying to come to terms with their with their death and and with death in general and 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 who she is and and what life is and the endeavor of life um and how hard it can be and she's quite a young character isn't she well she's not she's no she's kind of elite 30 plus is what i've said she's kind of yeah. late late 30s in my head she's probably um yeah because a, a lot of her references are from the 90s so she was a teenager in the 90s put it that way that's that's the the age of her oh lovely so some <laughs> some maybe some parallels that uh yeah yeah your own yeah. life as well yeah. so I mean, that, <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of me in there <laughs> oh no well that that's amazing because you know i think it it kind of 
you know, really sort of hits the, the story home, doesn't it, as well, um, mm -hmm. with dealing with something like that. But obviously, you know, your age group is, is you know, well, it, it's pretty young to have lost a sister, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that, that character um, is dealing with a lot of that, you know, her, it, the, her sister has gone too young essentially and um and her mum really has gone too young as well she's not really that she's not an elderly mum so it is it's that uh, that sense of people who've gone before their time which is you know it's something that's been right at the front of our minds particularly in the last couple of years um and I feel like it's it's something everybody's really dealing with at the moment is that sense that we've had choice taken away from us and um yeah people have gone too soon a lot of what's happened in the last couple of years has has been all about that. So I feel like what she's dealing with in the play is kind of similar to what everybody's been dealing with recently. Was it something that you know? Because you said you you started writing it like eight nine years ago. Was it it something that you just suddenly thought, well, this is you know the sort of time to to release this now, given, as I said, you know, that people obviously have suffered a lot of grief, an immense amount of grief in the last um, mm. two years. Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm actually, I'm tracking back my timings now and it can't have been eight or nine years ago because I think my daughter was in my arms when I was reworked. Oh, maybe it was, maybe it was like seven or eight. But yeah, it was, it, it was something that I was, my, my, basically I lost my dad um, in 20, 14 and um and I think that that's where this play came from and it came from a place of me trying to deal with grief um and it's been a I think it's been a long process of developing it because it's a hard thing to to work on and, and but it's been a really cathartic thing and I'm hoping that now it's kind of finally finding a stage it's taken a while to get to that point where we can find a stage just because of the practicalities as well of making a play where there's a woman swimming <laughs> the whole thing like how do we even do that it's you know I'm excited to see how they do it um but the yeah I, I feel like somehow it has kind of found a stage at the right time because now we, we are all living with grief like everybody has been touched by it in some way um particularly in the last couple of years and so it, it does it feels kind of like the right time to be doing this play and um I hope it's cathartic it's also not just all about grief it's also about like mother-daughter relationships and sisterly relationships and 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 what we do and endurance and what our bodies do and body image and how we feel about our bodies and how we kind of inherit these um these these feelings about what we look like and how we feel from the women above us and the people around us and um and it should be pretty funny as well. So it's not all just doom and gloom. No, but you know, it is because, you know, I mean, just like yourself, I mean, I, I lost my dad quite young. I got here 17 years ago. Um, okay. And, you know, I lost my mum six and a half years ago um so yeah no I mean I, I've been through a lot of grief um as you do when you lose family members I mean yeah. I'm a mum myself now but I mean what I mean to say here is that although there is the you know the 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 poignant kind of you know um raw really raw emotion where you just it's uncontrollable there are also times as well when you find yourself thinking, oh, my God, I'm just like my mother. Yeah. And laughing about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, my goodness, I'm just so like my mother. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's yeah. absolutely that. And, and the patterns that you realise that you're, you, are, you are in are ones that you've been repeating since you were a child and all these different things. But also the fact that, you know, even in the saddest, most grief-stricken moments that I've been in, I, I I've found a lightness, and I found a you know something funny has happened, or something weird has happened that's made everybody laugh. It's one of those things where you kind of go, grief is really unbearably sad, and it's it doesn't ever stop being sad, but it kind of you, you find ways to cope with it, and you find ways to um, grow around it and grow bigger around it and and I think that a lot of that for me has been 
um, humor and um, connecting the dots between, uh, you know, family traits and and what we do and how we behave and how we feel about ourselves. And yeah, I I, I just think that I hope that this play is something that will be a cathartic thing to watch and to go through. And and also just watching a woman do something really amazing. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, it's quite a feat to do to do that. And, 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 and actually performing it will be a bit of a feat, I feel like, because of the way that they're going to be doing it. So, yeah, it will be I think it's going to be a bit of a treat. Have you been, you know, have you been sort of um, what's the word? Um, I think of the word, isn't it? Typical women sometimes you forget. <laughs> you, forget <laughs> um, you know, have you been asked about how you want this to look um, by Super? Oh, yeah, no, it's a, because it's a new work, it's a new play. You, you tend to, as a writer, sort of work quite closely with the director and the producers and the team and everything. So you do get a bit of you know input into that but it will be Chino's um, Chino who's directing it it will be her vision um, and she's got some fantastic ideas about it but I yeah I'm around on one hand and we sort of we we when it's new work you sort of make it all together which I really love um, and I can't yeah I can't wait we've got an incredible team that hasn't been announced yet and yeah it's going to be brilliant it's going to be really fun oh fantastic and I mean, it's not until the spring, is it? So you'll be yeah. touring the the whole of the east of England. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and um, it's going to be interesting because in terms of the way that they design it and the the rig that we will need to use, it's going to have to fit into lots of different spaces. So that's a challenge in except in itself. So it's almost worth coming just to see how they manage to do that. But it is. Um, yeah it's going to be a real treat because I haven't been I haven't had any plays over in the east of England um before so I'm really excited to be over in that part so I've got I've got sort of um family over there and I've visited the area but I've never worked there so oh I'm excited. wow so it's a first isn't it yeah yeah I'm excited no that is exciting so uh, as far as the cast is concerned are we allowed to talk about that no not yet we were still in the midst of auditions so nothing is confirmed yet um but yeah we've got some incredible people coming in so I'm just yeah they're going to be brilliant <laughs> whoever it is yeah I mean for you when did you Morgan when did you first start writing when did you first uh, well I mean I've I, I wanted to be an actor, so I um, went to Goldsmiths and did drama and theatre arts and um, met a couple of people who I just started making stuff with. And I wrote a play that myself and um, Katie Lyons was in and Verity Warner directed, and we ended up taking it to the Edinburgh Fringe and it did all right. So we sort of kind of carried on doing that. We ended up doing five, five Edinburgh Fringes in the end. And I was part of, we, we sort of created a bit of a comedy double act kind of thing um we were called triplicate and we had a lot of fun we had we just used to do loads of characters and everything but um I got to the point basically after about six years of this <laughs> where I realized I was getting really bad stage fright I wasn't really enjoying performing anymore and um and but I was enjoying the writing so I decided to let let the performing dream go <laughs> and uh and just focus on writing and it's kind of been ever since then it's just been tr trying to get a foothold and try and work out what my voice is and how I want to write and I've done all sorts of things I've done community shows I've done Christmas shows pantomimes um I've done lots of team written things immerse site specific immersive stuff and and then I started writing my own plays with my own voice essentially I kind of worked out what I was and my first one was called Belongings and it was on at Hampstead Theatre and we transferred it into the West End. And then I did another one called The Wasp. And I started to find my MO, I guess, of writing parts for women. Um, that sort of, that I realized that that was something that I was really passionate about, Ma mainly because I had lots of lots of w uh, friends who just weren't getting any parts because there, were <laughs> there weren't enough parts ah. out there. <laughs> so, so I was like, I can do something about that. I will write some parts for you. Um, and so I, that's what I've kind of carried on doing. And that's, and then I did Amelia, which is the one that really kind of um, so kicked cool. things up for me and had an incredible time doing that. And yeah, ever since then, I've just been pulling my plays out of drawers going, well, I've got these two, let's do this one as well. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Really what was it like though, when you first of all actually saw your play come to life on stage? 
Oh, well, the first, well, first time when I wasn't, wasn't in one. Well, actually, when I, when I was in them, they were terrifying because I was having to do them and I was on stage. I found them absolutely excruciating. Um, but my first proper play of my own that I wrote all by myself, Belongings, it was an amazing experience, actually. We had a wonderful team. Maria Aberg directed, and it was at Hampstead Downstairs. And they did the most incredible production. And it, again, it was kind of, it had per personal themes in there, but it was dealing with stuff that I was really passionate about at the time, about women and gender roles and um, things like revenge porn. Like there's there was lots of stuff in there that was dealing with a lot of issues and quite dark things, but it was also funny. And I just loved it. I just loved sitting in an audience watching everybody, you know, go on a journey with us. So it, yeah, that kind of solidified that this is, I'm doing what I love. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, that that really is amazing because, you know, that's what life is all about, isn't it? I think is, mm -hmm. is actually doing something that you love, that you enjoy doing. And that, you well, know, I feel very lucky. I feel I mean, it's a privilege to be able to do what you love, I think. And and I feel very lucky to be able to to do it for for a living. And uh, I mean, the problem with the theatre industry is it isn't as easy for people to access access as a job. Um, if you haven't got backup, if you haven't got money, um, if you haven't got people to help you. So it's, I'm lucky to have got to this stage in my career and to be still managing to make a bit of a living out of it. But particularly after the pandemic as well, I think it's gonna be even harder for people to do it. So I hope that we can find ways to make theater more accessible to people who, who perhaps feel a bit shut out from it really. Yes, no, I, do, I totally agree. It's, it's been a very difficult time, hasn't it, for mm -hmm. everybody in theatre. So um, it's good to see that that happening. So what, what are you kind of like thinking about doing next? Oh, well, I'm working on, um, I've started working on screen stuff. So I'm, I'm writing a mini series at the moment um, for telly. And I'm I'm developing my, a couple of my plays into film. So Amelia, I'm developing for a film, um, and The Wasp as well, and my play Mum as well. <laughs> so lots of my plays are becoming films, which is nice. Um, and it's a completely different wheelhouse. It's a very different muscle, and I'm really enjoying it. Actually, it's really fun. Um, so those are the main things I'm doing. I've got a couple of theatre things potentially happening in the next year or so, but I can't. Yeah, it's, it's annoying me. I can't talk about them, but it is you know no. things. It's nice, it's nice to know Things that I've got are coming. No, that, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> no, and as you said, you know, using a different muscle and actually, you know, turning your plays into films must be really yeah. quite exciting as well. And then, you yeah. know, working with a different set of discipline, isn't it, really? So, yeah. and I know we've seen a lot of hybrid as well mm. this year because of the mm. pandemic, which has been quite yeah. interesting. But you know, I mean, to to actually make a film out of it, I think is is good. It's exciting. Yeah, no, I, I, it's a real learning curve as well because you just you have to think in a very different way. You know, when you're working in theatre, you're thinking all the time about the live experience an audience is having, and you're almost having a conversation with the audience at, at times, and 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 getting reactions, instant reactions from people, laughter and applause and gasps and all that kind of thing. And it's just it's a very different. Um, way of thinking and, and also for theatre you, you kind of you're not really controlling where people are looking whereas in in film that's exactly what you're doing you're telling them exactly what they're looking at so for me as a writer that's kind of really exciting but also so detailed in a way that um, I've not done before so I'm learning a lot and it's uh it's definitely a very different muscle but I'm enjoying I'm enjoying it fantastic so now I suppose we can officially say that you're a screenwriter as well yeah <laughs> Yeah, I am. I am very excited. Yeah. It, it, it's weird though because I know I I actually did uh, put a film together. Well, no, I used to work in TV, but I mean I put a film together years ago um, with a friend who was doing a, a Royal College of Art degree. Oh, and, yeah. um, I mean it, it's just so weird, film, isn't it? Because you know you basically have filmed the end before you film the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's all backwards and forwards. I know. And I really think that, yeah, actors are incredible when they're able to sort of go, okay, where are we in the script here? What do I need to be doing? How much do I know? Like, it's it's an amazing thing to be able to do that. Whereas in, yeah, in a in a play, when you sit in it, they go from beginning to end and they are, they're, they're feeling it all the way through. But yeah, to, to go, to be jumping in and out of different moments, I think, huge yeah. skill. I'm very, I'm very, I'm in awe, in awe of those actors in particular. 
Oh, definitely. No, that sounds really good. So you're obviously passionate about what you do, which is just brilliant, isn't it? Mm. yeah oh god yeah I mean I, I couldn't do it you can't do it if you're not passionate because it's quite hard work <laughs> and it's it's one of those things that yeah you don't get paid very much for a very long time particularly in theatre so you have to be passionate you have to be able to work other jobs um you you often have to have somebody like helping you with money um it's yeah you have to really want it because it's it can be um it can be a bit of a cruel mistress can work in <laughs> <laughs> but it's wonderful when you do get to do it it's just a, a wonderful thing and theater is you know a place where we try out ideas we work out the world we try and envisage a world that we want to see we try and right wrongs we try and make changes and um it's a really valuable thing that we have access to in this country in particular and i guess I, I just hope that we continue to have support for the stuff that we 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 do in theatre because it's really important. And I, I I think I'm worried about the way that funding has been massively stripped back, um, particularly by this government and uh, arts in the schools and the way that theatre hasn't been properly supported. Um, it's quite worrying because I think we really do need theatre and the arts and everything in order to to survive, to live, to exist, you know, to process. And particularly after everything that's been going on, we're going to need it. We're going to need art and theatre to process everything that we've all been through. So oh, I couldn't I agree it. more, actually. I think, you know, really, honestly, it was like it was fine if you were into sport, wasn't it? <laughs> yes that's true <laughs> it was fine they brought like, the sport back quite and quickly it. and it's like you know we it's it's a bit that in itself is it's like you know that ha, it, it's we need that kind of thing and we need that kind of collective mm. coming together and I just I hope that yeah theatre's remembered in all of that because it's just well it's, I mean I do as well I mean I, you know I like the old game of football don't get me wrong and I enjoyed yeah. watching the Euros but I love theatre yeah. I really, really do. You know, I think it's it's something that, you know, I'm very passionate about as well. And I'd love to go and watch a live performance. And I think that's great. And I think, you know, we've just been completely bereft of that, really, haven't we? It's been really hard not being able to go and see stuff and do stuff. Uh, in theatres I mean it's definitely like it obviously theatres back open again and there's a bit of a conversation happening at the moment about mask wearing and and there's a you know theatres are, shows are being closed down because people are getting covid and you know we're having to cancel shows and I think until things have gone until we don't have a pandemic anymore we are going to still have to keep being careful about it and protecting performers and protecting each other and just to kind of keep it going because there was a time last year where we just were completely shut it was just not possible so it's been wonderful to be able to do theatre but I think we still have to be quite careful until until we're actually fully out of this pandemic because we're we're not there yet no no <clears throat> and as I said you know there there is one good thing that's come out of this pandemic as far as theatre is concerned <clears throat> is What's the that? Fact that you know you can have hybrid productions now yeah and the streaming that that has been happening is fantastic and that has that has started a conversation about the accessibility of theatre and actually if we record or stream um productions yes obviously it's not as good as being in the theatre but not everybody can get to a theatre theatre not everybody can sit in those seats not everybody can afford the theatre in the same way and actually I've really really loved being able to watch certain productions from the comfort of my home instead of having to go and see them because I've just I, I wouldn't see them otherwise because I haven't got the space in my time you know family life is full and work life is full and you you know just in that respect it's lovely to be able to still see stuff particularly stuff where you're being told oh this is a brilliant show and you're like I'm just not going to be able to get to it it's been amazing being able to watch things online and and get a little bit of that experience of being in the theatre I've really loved that so I really I, I do hope we keep doing that basically I really oh I, really I don't hope. think they're gonna lose it now do you yeah because I just I, think it's opened so many doors as well and as yeah. you said you know the the other thing is if you are you're very busy then you don't have to get in the car and go but also yeah. you know it gives people opportunities doesn't it to view something that they would never have the hope of getting to yeah. you know Scotland for example from yeah. 
yeah England exactly and, you know yeah. and so many shows are very London centric and not everybody lives in London that's the other no. thing is that you know there's lots of like my mum who lives in Wales I know that she's enjoyed watching a couple of things that have been gone on and it's 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 brilliant and um way more accessible and actually anything that makes theatre more accessible is a good thing in my book Definitely. I agree with you. I couldn't agree with you more. Do you know what, Morgan? It's been lovely to chat to you. It really, really you has. Thanks so, for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. So break a leg with the long tricks Thank over. And, and I look, will look forward to, well, I, I, I can't watch it over the internet, can I? Uh, we might. I, I, I assume that that will be done i'm sure that there there will be something because yeah. i that's pretty much like we were saying i think most people are trying to do all that so and streaming theater really isn't that hard so i'm sure we'll be doing that so Brilliant. yes Brilliant. <laughs> i'll get the opportunity to see it because i probably yeah. won't like yeah just be able to fit it in my I know. don't worry don't worry but, oh well, thank yeah. you so much for chatting and you take care bye yeah. Bye. Look forward to chatting with my next guest on the Tea Time Sofa this time next Saturday. In the meantime, if you would love to get in touch about having a chat with me, you can reach me on Tea Time at forthenow.co.uk where you can find me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram on Tea Time with AM. Bye for now.